Good morning, afternoon, evening. Pessim and come time to another video today. This one's really quick. I'm going to go over Warren Buffett and his annual shareholder shareholders letter that he gave this past Saturday for how he performed in 2019. If you're a new subscriber, you know, welcome. You know, I like to provide passive income videos as well as tips, as well other money market related matters, but it's mostly passive income. So if you haven't, you know, please subscribe and click the bell notification. And I come up with a video every Friday. I, that one I definitely can do. Others, I usually try to get another one or two videos in during the week. But without any further ado, I'm going to get right to the point and go over what Warren Buffett, how he did, you know, how is it, how is Warren uh, Berkshire Hathaway did over 2019, and how to kill key points off of his annual letter. Okay. Warren Buffett start, first started doing this annual letter on, since 1970. And, uh, but right here, it goes over, you know, his Berkshire Hathaway's performance versus the S&P 500 starting back in 1965. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm sure we don't really care as much how it's done over the years, but really care about what it did in 2019. In 2019, Berkshire Hathaway earned 11% versus the S&P 500, which was 31.5%. You know, that's a lot, a big difference between what Warren Buffett's company earned versus what the S&P 500 earned, you know, 11% versus 31.5%. Okay, Berkshire Hathaway earned $81.4 billion in 2019, according to the generally accepted accounting principles, uh, which are commonly known as GAAP, G-A-A-P. The components of that figure are $24 billion operating expenses, $3.7 billion of realized capital gains, and $53.7 million gained from increasing the amount of net, net unrealized capital gains that exist in the stocks we hold. In his own words, Charlie and I urge you to focus on operating earnings, which were little change in 2019, and to ignore both quarterly and annual losses, gains and losses from investments, whether they are realized or unrealized. Our advising that in no way diminish the importance of these investments to Berkshire. Over time, Charlie and I expect our equity holdings as a group to deliver major gains, albeit in an unpredictable, highly irregular manner. To see why we're optimistic, move on to the next discussion. All right, I'm gonna skip some of this because yes, it's good to know, but you can always Google this, look it up yourself. Um, this is a 13 page document. I'm not gonna cover all 13 pages of this. <clears throat> At Berkshire, Charlie and I have long focused on using retained earnings advantageously. Sometimes this job has been easy and other times more difficult, particularly when we begin working with huge and ever-growing sums of money. If you don't know, Berkshire has a lot of money sitting on the side. And in deployment of the funds we retain, we first seek to invest in that many and diverse businesses we already own. During the past decade, Berkshire's depreciation charges have aggravated $65 billion, whereas the company's internal investments in property, plant, and equipment have totaled $121 billion. Reinvestment in productive operation assets will Will forever remain our top priority. And when we spot such businesses, our preference would be to buy 100% of them, but the opportunities to make major acquisitions possessing our required attributes are rare. Far more often, a fickle stock market serves up opportunities for us to buy large but non-controlling positions in publicly traded companies that meet our standards. So that's why he's sitting on a lot of cash. He's waiting for the right time to buy the right investment You know that'll really help out his his company as well as his shareholders that's really what he's, he's working for you know try to give value back to his shareholders the 10 largest stock market holdings of his businesses okay he, for he owns american express 18.7 percent uh, apple 5.7 percent if you don't know he wasn't an early investor in apple but he came along in the last few years uh, bank of america 10.7 percent Bank of New York Mellon, 9.9%. Coca-Cola, 9.3%. Delta Airlines, 11%. JP Morgan Chase, 1.9%. Moody's, 13.1%. U.S. Bank Corps, 9.7%. And Wells Fargo, 8.4%. So it goes on the covers of other investments. Uh, the BNSF Rail Railroad and Berkshire Hathaway Energy, the two lead dogs of Berkshire's non-insurance group, earned a combined $8.3 billion in 2019 and an increase of 6% from 2018. The next five non-insurance subsidiaries are ranked as by earnings. Uh, Clayton Homes, International Metalworking, Lubrizol, Marmon, and Precision Cast Parts had an aggr er, aggregate earnings in 2019 of 4.8 billion, little unchanged from what they earned in 2018. 
Next five, similarly ranked enlisted Berkshire Hathaway Auto Automotive, Johns Mans Mansville, uh, NetJets, Shaw, and TTI earned $1.9 billion last year, up from $1.7 billion in the previous year. The remaining non-insured businesses that Berkshire owns, and there are many, had aggregate earnings of $2.7 billion in 2019, down from $2.8 billion in 2018. Okay, now really to get to really meat of really what he talked about in his address. You know, Warren Buffett, you know, praises his performance but offers no surprises in his annual letter. You know, Warren Buffett noted that the steady money making of the conglomerate but gave no insight into his succession or other hot topics. Berkshire Hathaway 2019 was another good year, an opportunity for its leader Warren Buffett to pair his company for life with Adam. In his latest letter to investors published on Saturday morning, the billionaire praised the performance of the $566 billion conglomerate, whose portfolio includes insurer Geico, chemical maker Lubrizol, Foot of the Loom Underwear, and more. An unrivaled amount of capital, abundance of cash, and a huge and diverse stream of non-insurance earnings allow us for more investment flexibility than is generally available to other companies in the industry, he wrote. The annual report was accompanied by the latest assessment of Berkshire's financial health, the company reported $29 billion in net income for the fourth quarter of 2019 and $81.4 billion for last year overall. Operating earnings, Mr. Buffett's preferred measure of financial performance, declined slightly last year from 2018 to $24 billion. In a further show of belief in his company's value, Mr. Buffett said that Berkshire's spent $5 billion in buying back its own company stock last year, but investors have hope that the company would spend more on stock repurchase since losing its policy Loosening, loosening its policy on such moves in 2018. Much of Saturday's letter served up a sort of greatest hits for the fans of Mr. Buffett and investors around the world who hang, hang on to his pronouncements as America's favorite capitalist uncle. There were quips like comparing corporate acquisitions and marriages that start with, off with a joyful wedding, but then reality tends to diverge from prenuptial expectations. And there was the complaint that Berkshire with a $120 billion cash hoard that Mr. Buffett wants to spend on big acquisitions, did not have great opportunities to do so. Missing from action this year was his favorite description of the cash pile, elephant gun. Instead, Mr. Buffett wrote, the fickle stock market serves as opportunities for us to buy large but non-controlling positions in publicly traded companies that meet our standards. That currently includes a $73 billion stake in Apple, $33 billion in Bank of America stock, and $22 billion in Coca-Cola shares. Mr. Buffett also noted that Berkshire valued its roughly 27% stake in Kraft Heinz, the packaged foods company that was one of his biggest recent deals and one of his most prominent investing flops in recent years at about $13.8 billion. By contrast, his annual letter in 2018 valued his Kraft Heinz stake at $17.6 billion. So he has, that's a painful loss, losing about $4 billion over the past few years. The billionaire also took time to complain about the poor state of many corporate boards, such as too few women serve on them, directors often captive to the management teams they're meant to supervise, particularly when it comes to acquisitions that chief executives want to make. Don't ask for the barber whether you need a haircut, he wrote. Too many directors go along with management teams in hopes of getting a good reference so they can be added to a separate corporate board and earn more paychecks. When seeking directors, CEOs don't look for pit bulls, Mr. Buffett wrote. It's a cocker spaniel that gets taken home. Yes, as many years passed, this year's letter did not dwell on the topic Berkshire has shareholders want to know most. Who will succeed Mr. Buffett, who's now 89, as conglomerate's chief executive? Time and again, Mr. Buffett said that he has someone in mind, but in the meantime, has no plans to retire anytime soon. In Saturday's letter, Mr. Buff reiterated that Berkshire was 100% prepared for the day that he and his longtime business partner, Charles Munger, 96, leave the scene. The reason Berkshire's investments are strong and prudent, the company's business are overseen by able managers and his remaining directors are trusted to stay the course. The letter reflected one more sign that Mr. Buffett was willing to share the limelight with his lieutenants, Ajit Jain and Greg Abel, both of whom have been widely speculated as the potential successors. So Agent Jane and Greg Abel, remember those names because I'm sure they may be pop up, popping up in the future to succeed Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. Mr. Buffett said that he would allow his attendees at Berkshire's annual shareholder meeting in May to direct questions 
part of a long-standing tradition where he and Mr. Munger answer questions on any topic to either of these men. Also left unaddressed in the letter was Mr. Buffett's most recent deal, the sale of Berkshire's newspaper holdings, and a sign that he was giving up on the news business. So quick, right to the point today on what Mr. Buffett and his letter, what he addressed for everything that happened in 2019 and some possible things coming up in the future. So as noted earlier, you know, even though, you know, Berkshire Hathaway didn't perform as well as the S&P 500, sometimes you always can't follow everything Mr. Buffett does, even though he's considered one of the greatest investors, but he also has a lot of deals. So he gets a lot of benefits that most investors like you and I will not get by when he goes into these deals. So, you know, pay attention when you do buy something just because, you know, Warren Buffett buys it because it may not really give you the same value that he'll get when he goes into these investments. But uh, hey, it was quick, right to the point today. Don't want to go into a whole lot of detail, but a quick overview. You know, once again, you can always look this up on the letter, read it yourself, just Google it. Uh, but, you know, if you haven't, you know, like this video, subscribe, click the bell for notification. I'll be back again this Friday with another passive income video. Take care. Have a great day.